Just across the Mississippi River, near the small community of Venice, Illinois, sits a one million square foot plant that was the metal products division of Dow Chemical Company. In 57, they would become subcontractors for Mallinckrodt Chemical Works. Shaping uranium metal and straightening uranium metal rods for the AEC's nuclear weapons program. I went to work there in September of uh, in 1961. I used to do they run aluminum and they run magnesium. That's all I knew. We were supposed to have protective clothing, uh, badges, and all that. We were supposed to have uh, urine samples. They never did none of that. The plant would change ownership several times over the years. But what wouldn't change were the questions about safety. They were wanting to know, well, what was reading on your badges? There wasn't anyone wearing badges or anything else when we were around it. Only had to wear a badge one time. And that was when the government was in there. And when they left, so did our badges. They dumped them in a barrel. They didn't count or, you know, send them off to be uh, tested or anything else. And a month later, they just threw them away. Oak Ridge National Laboratory conducted a survey of the plant in March of 89. They would discover uranium and thorium dust on overhead beams as high as 13 times the Department of Energy's guidelines. Well, when we started having a, a large amount of cancer reported in our plant, in the 60s, that's when Bill Hoppe and myself got involved. And we started getting all kinds of information on And we'd done a study on the amount of employees we had and the cancer rate. And it was higher than any other place that we were around, you know. We knew we ran radioactive materials, but they'd always bring out a Geiger counter and said, see, there's no readings. You could lay on that stuff for a thousand years and it wouldn't hurt you. In 1975, I had cancer on my ear three times. Three different do two different doctors operated on me. And uh, then in 1999, I was diagnosed with bladder cancer and I had to have my bladder removed. Just as the sun was going down, you would get this fog or dense smoke kind of thing. And as you, when you're driving down it from the end of the college street, you could just see it was just blankets of smoke. And you knew that that between 7, 7.30 or 8, you know, the, that that was coming from the plant. They were opening up whatever they were opening up and letting that all dispense into the air. The smoke would be so bad, it'd come down through here, across here, and they'd have to shut it, the mill down, because they couldn't see on kind of being so smoky in that. If it's high humidity out, it would be terrible. So you know all this area would be catching it also. If the, it all depends on what light wind would be blowing. When it became uh, evident that something was going on was, by this time my brother was in college and he had a green um, Volkswagen Beetle. 75 Volkswagen Beetle, I was really proud of it. My first, very first car. And uh, kept it polished and shined as, as a teenager would. But you find that this dross this uh, particulates that would be billowing out this company, uh, the factory smokestack, would be displayed on the top of my car. And he would go out in the mornings, you know, after the nightfall, and he'd brush off, you know, there was a, a, cover, a white covering on, on the car. And you become conscious of what's taking place here. As we were growing up for years, one of the things that we always had was a garden. It wasn't unusual for us to have all kinds of beans and vegetables and things like that that we had gotten from the garden, and that's what we ate off during the, the winter months. My dad, he died of a very aggressive brain cancer, and he died at the age of 54, which is, uh, to me, a very young age. Particularly since uh, uh, the history of the family was such that uh, none of us had, or his brothers or his sisters or anybody, had that type of cancer, you know, in the family was that what we had ingested and what we had taken in as food was that some of the causes of the problems that we're, in, uh, we, we're having today. Maybe, uh, you never know.